Do you want to just give us sort of the, the 30 second version of what Aceto does? Sure. Um, so Aceto, uh, essentially, we manage, we design, build and manage video services for media companies and pay TV providers. And uh, we're a global company. We have offices in, in 16 uh, locations and uh, we serve our customers both through a professional service arm and also a, a product-based solution called Aceto One. Tell me more about that. So essentially, if you are a media company, right, and if you're not Netflix and have the kind of budget that Netflix has, uh, right. we, we have uh, 2,000 Silicon Valley engineers, uh, and you still need to get your uh, content out there in the marketplace on all the different devices, right, because you need to make your customers happy. That is quite a challenge, right? So uh, then you can use uh, a C1 uh, as a way to, to launch your service and grow your service. And what's really unique with uh, C1 is that it's a SaaS service and it's, um, it's made as a way, so you can really grow with the platform. So typically mm -hmm. for OTT providers, it's a challenge because you go through different maturity stages as you grow, right? And then you typically want to rip and replace different partners um, depending which stage you're in, which type of maturity, maturity you're in. And with this solution, you can essentially, you can integrate different partners because we have an open API frame set. And that makes it easier for our customers to, to grow with the platform, right? Because they can change partners as they grow. Great, yeah. O open API, you know, scaling. Sounds like you're leveraging the power of the cloud. Uh, how, how did you first get involved in the AWS uh, cloud space? So we've been a cloud um, provider, but I think more than uh, 10 years, actually. So for us, wow. um, we started out 2004, um, and we, re we made a bet on all the sort of that media distribution would go to, to any kind of device, right? That, that sounds, it wasn't as sexy back then because essentially there were only a set of boxes available. <laughs> but after a time you had the game consoles and then smartphones came along and then you had smart TVs and all this um, sort of the plethora of devices uh, created a big demand for our cloud solutions. So we had we had a scale issue, right? Uh, so we needed to, to scale with that demand. And we also never thought that we were especially good at managing the, that part of the tech, right? We rather focused on the things we were good at and uh, building the software on top of um, the platform. Yeah, that makes total sense. So you, you, you've touched on a little bit, but what do you think the impact of cloud will be on business over the next three years. So you, you talk about the plethora of devices, but what do you think looking forward uh, for the next three uh, we're likely to see? I think it will have a huge impact. I actually think we are in the middle of a perfect storm of disruption at the moment. Um, yeah. And I, I'm thinking of this in a way, I mean, we've all been in the, in the, in the industry for quite some time, right? And I, Embarrassed to say I've been going to IBC for 20 years uh, and not, not much has changed, right? And I think the reason for that is if you look at the, the classical broadcast industry, it's been, it's consisted of uh, many, many a fragmented ecosystem, right? So you had lots of islands of solutions uh, and we've all uh, innovated in on those small islands, right? Uh, but I think the really key thing that the cloud technology will enable is that essentially it will enable horizontal innovation, not just innovation in each small, on each small island, right? Mm. That's really the big thing over time that we will all be innovating together on this uh, big technology piece, right? And that will make things move faster. Tell me more about what opportunities you see in the, in the horizontal uh, evolution. Are there anything specifically that you're thinking of? Well, I think, um, I mean, AWS is a good example, right? See, with their acquisition of Elemental, right? 
and they have essentially put a lot of features uh, as table stakes inside the cloud platform. So why would people and companies compete and innovate on, on those table stakes mm -hmm. instead of innovating on new stuff, right, and new technology? So essentially, I think they've laid the groundwork and then all, our, all the companies out in the ecosystem can, can innovate on, on top of that instead of trying to reinvent the wheel uh, again and again and again. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does feel like uh, the, the continued use, not having to reinvent the wheel over and over again uh, is, a, is a huge theme. And you mentioned uh, Elemental. Are there any other cloud technologies other than yours that you've read about or heard about that you find particularly interesting? Yeah, I think there are, I mean, many cool companies out there. I mean, if you look at, um, especially um, looking at production uh, phase, right? You have lots of companies trying to innovate in that space. Uh, now you can, you can pretty much view and edit and publish everything in the cloud. Uh, you have companies like Blackbird, uh, Gravio, I think, uh, is another company. Uh, and they're really trying to revolutionize the, the production space, right? And that, that part of the business. And the other part of the business that's really interesting where maybe cloud is not a, the only enabler, right? But it makes things way simpler and cheaper is AI, which is a big trend at the moment. And there, one example of a company that I've been in touch with is, is a, it's actually another Swedish company called Signality. They're doing quite, a, quite some cool things uh, with regards to AI and, and sports analytics. So they can track things in, in real time, uh, which is pretty cool. Well, you know, it's funny you touched on something that I was going to ask you about. What's going on in Sweden that there are so many companies that are innovating in the cloud and video? Uh, we, we've already, you know, it, it, people are going to think we only interview Swedish companies, but uh, <laughs> we're looking for everybody. So what, what do you attribute that to? Yeah, it's a good question. I think it has to do with the fact that uh, for once, uh, Ericsson is, has always been a huge company here. So there is a, uh, a good base of engineers, right? Um, but I think also that um, in terms of technology, IPTV was actually very, very early in, in Sweden. So we had loads of companies working on IPTV solutions, both from a software perspective and also a hardware perspective. So you have, you had Createl, who later was bought by Motorola uh, from a set box perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, you had Amino, uh, they, they acquired another uh, Swedish set box manufacturers. You had middleware companies and so forth. So there has been quite a, a few companies uh, that you say originated from, from Sweden. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I hadn't thought about that before, but uh, you know, it's interesting to see the, the downstream impacts of that even you know, decades later. Well, um, final question for you, and it's the, the topical one. We, we wouldn't be able to get away with the interview without asking you about uh, coronavirus. And um, what do you think the impact is gonna be on the entertainment industry or on the cloud industry over the next 12 months? Yes, uh, obviously these, these are difficult times. Uh, from a, what we see in the marketplace now is, is that the difference a bit depending what type of, of, of player you are. Right? So obviously coronavirus means that we are mostly staying home, uh, which is typically good for uh, S1 services, uh, so they thrive at the moment. It's uh, less good for sports, right? Because there are no sport events. Uh, <laughs> That's an understatement, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are struggling, of course. Um, and then I think uh, maybe one part of the market that we might forget is that many video services are, actually are, are driven by uh, an ad economy, right? Mm -hmm. and since uh, the coronavirus will affect the economy in itself, that will also affect those companies that are actually based on, on advertising as a way of monetizing their service. Mm -hmm. So uh, the winners are the s providers, uh, and then uh, sports are obviously struggling a bit. And then uh, we'll see about advertising, how long it will take for the economy to, to pick up. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, it's interesting seeing all of the innovation. I, I was talking to my wife and she was saying that they're currently now, uh, I think, selling, you can buy cardboard cutouts of yourself to put in the stadium. And they're even allowing people to do that with pets. So you, you can have your dog or your cat in Dodger Stadium, you know, watching the game. Uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, it's going to be who, who would have thought that would be something that we would be looking at. So it's. Uh, do, you only, do you only have to pay for the for the cutout or do you also have to pay a ticket for, for, for them to see the game? <laughs> you, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, but it, it'll be really interesting to see where that goes. I, I, I think that people are ready for sports to come back. And so, um, you know, it's, it's really just having to entirely remake what the, the economies actually look like. Uh, yeah. you know, what is it? And it, it's got to be strange also with a stadium, you know, that's completely empty. Playing a game must feel like, a, you know, a practice game rather than something that, that people are used to. Yeah, uh, it's weird for sure. But you, you've seen they, they're adding uh, the, the classical noise for soccer games and, and so forth. Oh, no, I hadn't yeah. seen that. Okay, so they're playing back the audio. Yes, so oh. you get the atmosphere at least. Well, uh, Friedrich, it, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I, I appreciate you making the time for, for this interview. And uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with you uh, regarding uh, Sato, what's the best way to do that? Uh, I guess you can reach out, I mean, go to acedo.tv, uh, our homepage, you can find me there, uh, or, or send me an email at uh, frederick.amazon at acedo.tv. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.